Hello, welcome to another of my videos about movie making gone wrong. Starting with a movie that was filmed in Peru. A man had a dream of building an opera house in the city of Iquitos, that expanded during a boom in the rubber industry. Fiscaraldo. Directed by Werner Herzog, this adventure drama film was released in 1982. This movie was based on historic events, when a baron named Carlos Fiskerald took a steamship over the Isthmus of Fiskerald. The steamship was not in one piece when Carlos Fiskerald attempted the journey in real life. The crew members had to steer a real 320-ton steamer ship through the Amazon forest in Peru, which was grueling for the cast members especially when the crew had to manually haul the steamer uphill which led to three injuries. Just so an Irish man Brian Sweeney Fitzgerald played by Klaus Kinski, could make it to the rubber plantations and make money. Klaus Kinski was not the first actor to be given the main role, Jason Robards was given the main role first. Only reason Klaus Kinski took his place is because Jason Robards fell ill with dysentery. Klaus Kinski became tough to work with, which led to violent clashes between the director and Klaus Kinski, when an extra actor who was the chief of the Mishiginga tribe asked Werner Herzog if he wanted Klaus Kinski to be killed. Werner Herzog declined the offer as he needed to finish the production. Rolling Stone's Mick Jagger should have starred in Fiskeraldo, however, due to band commitments he was cut out of the movie. This next movie was released while I was in my junior years. I stayed at an old friend's house in an old town I lived in and it made me cry at the end. Which is graspable as this movie is based on a real-life disaster, museums have been created, so people can understand what it must have been like. Also on every anniversary of the disaster, people still go to the site and pay their respects. Titanic Directed by James Cameron who has a fascination of shipwrecks, Titanic contains plenty of romance before the initial disaster happens, as well as keeping the movie factual, James Cameron added scenes just to give a better storyline, than just the sinking of the RMS Titanic. As proven, water and movie production does not work well with each other and can cause many disasters. The water used was freezing to keep the genuineness of the disaster. When Rose played by Kate Winslet entered the water, the gasp captured was a real reaction, many of the cast and crew members came down with the flu, due to filming in the water. Production started in 1995 which began with the shipwreck of RMS Titanic filmed under the ocean. James Cameron traveled to the site on a research ship named Akademik Mstislav Keldish, which this research vessel was where the modern-day scenes were filmed. RMS Titanic was computer-generated, although, for the scene when the ship sank, RMS Titanic was reconstructed at Bajor Studios. Both Paramount Pictures and 20th Century Fox helped finance the movie and after production it was the most expensive movie with a starting budget of 200 million. The movie was released to the public on 19 December 1997, and became a worldwide success with a post-production gross of $1.84 billion. Titanic also won 11 Academy Awards, including Best Director and Best Picture. In 2012 Titanic was released once again on 4 April to commemorate the actual sinking, this time the movie was to be shown in 3D that made an additional $343.6 million. Even though this movie did well, besides some people coming down with the flu, behind the scenes another event occurred. A chef managed to hospitalize 50 crew members with a hallucinating drug PCP, after spiking the chowder. Some people detest the CIA, some people work towards being a CIA agent, and a lot of people wish to be part of the music industry. But what happens if you bring them both together, like the movie? Ishtar. Directed by Elaine May. This adventure comedy was released to the public in 1987. 
This story is about two songwriters that were not talented, and they managed to end up in a four-party Cold War standoff, after they entered Morocco. The filming started in the Sahara Desert instead of a film studio, which caused high tensions throughout the production team, due to the heat. Especially between Elaine May, the producer Warren Beatty and the cinematographer Vittorio Storo. Dustin Hoffman who played Chuck Clark, had to mediate between Elaine May and Warren Beatty, due to the constant arguing. That was not the only issue though, the search for landmines happened every day before filming commenced and there were many altercations between the guerrilla factions and Moroccan military. The movie was well over budget due to many retakes and costume runs. The starting budget for the movie was $27.5 million, by the end of production it stepped up to $51 million. Ishtar also had a lot of media attention even before the movie was released. After the release, it was classed as the worst movie ever made by the critics, and it was only released in Europe on DVD then it went on to Blu-ray in 2013. Ishtar was the movie that destroyed Elaine May's career, the arguments continued after production and Elaine May later admitted that she only wanted a director to help and approve her writing, Elaine May did not want to direct the movie at all. Ishtar only made a total of $14 million. Many people wonder what life would be like as a queen, and sometimes people pretend they are by acting as one just like Elizabeth Taylor did in the 1963 version of Cleopatra. This movie is another that was expensively made, directed by Joseph L. Mankiewicz, who replaced Ruben Mamoulian shortly after filming started. This version is based on the book by Carlo Maria Franzro titled The Life and Times of Cleopatra which was published in 1957. The movie depicts Cleopatra played by Elizabeth Taylor during her struggles against Rome's imperial ambitions. Two million dollars was the budget that 20th Century Fox planned for the production of the movie, however, that quickly doubled before filming commenced. One million dollars was given to Elizabeth Taylor to play the leading role, which was not enough and it was not long before she was given more money. 28th of September 1960, production commenced at Pinewood Studios, London. Due to health problems Elizabeth Taylor occurred, production was placed on hold till November 1960, before the production set was relocated to Sinisita in Rome, on 25th of September 1961 filming resumed. Without a script as four people, Dale Wasserman, Lawrence Durrell, Nunnally Johnson and Nigel Balchin all reconstructed the script many times. Money was also spent on sets that were never used, and during early production six hours of filming was cut down to three due to 20th Century Fox. The media also got hold of a story while Cleopatra was in production about Elizabeth Taylor and Richard Burton who played Mark Antony, having an adultery affair. Everyone thought the production of Cleopatra had finished on 28 July 1962, with some scenes having to be shot over again between February and March 1963. Which almost bankrupted 20th Century Fox with the production costing $31 million up to this point, with marketing it cost a total of $44 million. After the movie was premiered at New York's Rivoli Theatre on 12 of June 1963 critics found the movie enjoyable and gained a total gross of $57.7 million from Canada and the United States. This movie also won four Academy Awards, for Best Art Direction, Best Cinematography, Best Costume Design and finally Best Visual Effects. This next movie is also based in the midst of the Roman Empire, that tells the story of a certain man and how prisoners were sometimes punished. I think these scenes are good quality, as they show what prisoners experienced and what it would have been like for actual spectators back in the day. The Passion of the Christ Mel Gibson, 
who is a devoted Christian, wrote and directed this movie, which was mostly filmed in Italy. The storyline is based around the books John, Luke, Mark and Matthew that are written in the Bible, as well as the visions of Anne Catherine Emmerich and the Friday of Sorrows. The film concentrates on the twelve days before Jesus was crucified. The story begins with agony in the garden in the Gethsemane, before moving on to Judas Iscariot played by Luca Linello's betrayal of Jesus. The scourging at the pillar was a brutal scene, it also showed the suffering that Mary played by Maya Morgenstern had to endure that was prophesied by Simeon, then finally the crucifixion of Jesus. Within the movie it also has flashbacks into the younger life of Jesus, like Mary comforting Jesus while crafting a table and the Last Supper. Mel Gibson was against the use of Amoraic, Hebrew and Latin dialogue, which has led this movie to have subtitles. Many people found this movie to be in keeping with the Bible and accept that is how the Romans probably treated their prisoners back in the day. Many thought the violence within the movie is too extreme and sickening to watch. While filming bad luck happened to some of the crew members, like while filming the scene when Jesus played by Jim Caviezel was conducting a sermon on the mount, he was struck by lightning and set on fire. When an assistant tried to help Jim Caviezel, the assistant was struck by lightning. When it came to filming the scene where Jesus is crucified, Jim Caviezel was hit by lightning again. Most people believe that when bad luck comes in threes it is all over, unfortunately that was not the case for Jim Caviezel. In one scene people may have noticed Jim Caviezel's skin turned blue, this was due to asphyxiation due to the prosthetics which also gave him a headache as they took 10 hours to put on. Jim Caviezel contracted hypothermia and pneumonia, he also suffered a broken shoulder, which can also be seen in the movie. This happened while he was carrying the cross which weighed 150 pounds. And the whipping scene, well Jim Caviezel was accidentally whipped twice. The Passion of the Christ became the highest grossing movie of 2004, at 612 million from a worldwide audience, which made it the highest Christian grossing film of all time. Many of the crew members converted to Christian belief, due to the unexplained occurrences while filming, even one member Luca Linello, who was deeply atheist before production commenced. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please leave a like and subscribe to my channel. Press that notification bell if you would like to keep up to date with my uploads. Thank you for watching.